Season 37, War number 9, and we are up against XK9. This time my team will be Tigra, Kitty, and Omega Sentinel. I'm gonna be taking 11 fights this war. I'm on path 5 in section 1. I'm taking that Mordo as well as that Cersei. That Bishop on the Power Snack node, path 5 in section 2, as well as that Omega Sentinel. And then all the right side mini bosses. Up first, we have the Sasquatch on the Ebonflow Knockdown and right back at it node. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. I'm running the Recoil Masteries here to increase my damage output as well as to give me free healing and the plan is essentially what I do against the Eben Ebenflow Intercept Sasquatch in section 2 I'm gonna be utilizing the phasing to deal with his specials I phase the first hit of the special and block the second Kitty is stunning me while phasing so the rock throw cannot stun you through your block that allows you to easily deal with the special without having to trigger dexterity, meaning you don't have to deal with Mystic Dispatch. I'm gonna be knocking him down whenever he gets that protection to remove it and to gain that passive fury. And the plan to get him down is to use my basic attacks to get him low, wait for him to trigger his wrath, then while the protection is down I go ahead and throw my special 3 in the hopes of finishing him off. The reason why I wait for him to trigger his wrath before going for my special is because each of those rage stacks gives him 5% damage reduction. So waiting for him to trigger the wrath first means that he removes all of those stacks. Next up we have a Nick Fury on the Ebonflow Knockdown and Heavy Hitter nodes. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. This is basically a normal Nick Fury fight. The only difference here is that I do go for some parry heavies to knock him down, to remove the protection and to gain that fury to speed up the fight. Normally, against Nick Fury, you don't really see me knocking him down because there really isn't any need to. But here, well, it's not necessary, but it does speed up the fight quite a bit. Even then, this is a slow fight. Another way to speed up the fight would be to use specials early on. But again, like I've said many times before, doing that against Nick Fury with Kitty is pretty risky, since using a special consumes all of your prowess. If Nick goes to his second life, he is stun immune, so you can parry him to gain your prowess. And especially on this note where you can't punish his heavy attacks, your only way to gain prowess is to get an opening by landing an intercept. And without your phasing, that is somewhat risky to do. Now here is where I mess up a bit. I tried to go for a parry and I missed it and ate a full heavy attack from Nick. Luckily he was still in his first life, so he didn't have that big fury buff. Then <laughs> I just get comboed again, but as Kitty is very overpowered with her phasing, I just avoid all of the damage and pretty much just healed during getting comboed. I wanted to knock him down before pushing him to his second life, but he was unblockable so I couldn't go for a parry. So, he is taking down a lot slower than he normally does. I go for a bit of a risky play here, and go for the face heavy attack in the corner. He did get a fifth tactical charge from me hitting a medium there, so... Had he punished me there, I would have gotten combo. Of course, I would have been faced and wouldn't have taken any damage, but... Still, that is somewhat risky to do as well. I wouldn't recommend it. I was just gonna play this slow to finish him off, but this special one pushed him over 20 charges, resetting them, so he didn't bypass miss anymore. So I just went ahead and 
Finish the fight off by facing the full special one. And then we have a Mordo on Evenflow Knockdown and right back at it. The shared fight in section 1 and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now I do have the White Magneto pre-fight here so this fight is basically like any other Mordo you've seen me take. As soon as I get to 10 prowess for that unblockable, there is nothing Mordo can do to me. Or that's how it usually goes, but here he just wasn't using specials, he was gonna get the power gain, so he would have been at special 3 here. I had to go and risk it, throw my special 2 while the protection was up. It didn't finish him, but I got enough power to get back to my special 1 there, which was enough luckily to finish him off, otherwise I would have eaten a special 3. Next up we have the Cersei on the Hazard Shift Incinerate and Shock node, as well as Insult to Injury, which is why I had to take off my Recoil Masteries. Having a debuff on me lowers my defensive ability accuracy by 30%, which can cause my parries and my prowess gain on parries to fail, so I did have to change my Masteries for this fight. Now last time I gave this fight to a CGR instead and it caused us a death, so this time I just went straight up with Kitty. I'm gonna try to redeem myself for that mistake here and the game plan is to wait out the glancing as well as the shock phase and go for big special twos to slowly but surely take her down. Now I did have a slight mistake here and I had forgotten to turn off a Alarm I had set, and apparently those get passed do not disturb. Luckily it happened while I was in the middle of my special attack animation, but it could have been bad. Since I need to wait out the shock phase anyways, I used that time to go for a lot of parries to build up my prowess using the white Magneto pre-fight. Here is the perfect example why I don't want to hit her during the shock phase. I have just one shock debuff on me, which I can use to heal up, but that debuff lowers my defensive ability accuracy by 30% due to the insult to injury node, meaning that my parries won't land. So that means that I can't build up my prowess that way. And since my big special twos during the incinerate phase are basically the only way I can do any meaningful damage in this fight, it is very important that I can land those parries. And again I messed up and used my special T while the glancing was up, and well the reason why I had to throw it during the glancing was because if I get boost to my special 3, well I'm gonna have to use it, otherwise I'm not gonna be doing any damage. And that special 3 inflicts a very long passive incinerate or an incinerate debuff depending on if I'm facing or not. And Cersei being a conduit defender, that would mean that she has the conduit regen up for a very long time. It wasn't even close to a perfect fight, but Kitty did it just fine and barely lost any HP in the process. So I'd say that went very well. Next up is a bishop on the power snack node here, and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now, normally, when I fight bishop with Kitty, I like to do the fight by fully facing his special ones, or special twos, but this time I'm trying something different. Instead of fully facing his specials, I dash at him to trigger the facing, and then hold block. To explain what that does, well, Kitty Pride doesn't cause blocked attacks to miss while facing, so any attack that breaks through your block will still hit you directly while facing, even if the opponent doesn't have a way to counter your miss. To explain why that is a good thing, you get more power for eating the hit from Kitty's awakened ability. It doesn't consume any prowess for eating a hit as opposed to missing a hit, and it pauses your facing, allowing you to deal with longer special attacks if necessary. It is also a lot easier than straight up fully facing bishop specials, so anyone can use it and be successful. 
the only downsides are that you lose on a little bit of damage for eating a hit instead of facing it, and you can't exactly follow up with a combo if you eat the hit instead of facing it. Next up we have a Scorpion on the Ebon Flow Intercept node, and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now I am running the Recoil Masteries here, or half of them, with the Poison, and the plan here is to basically just nuke him down with a single special too. I'm building up my prowess early on for the Unblockable, and the idea is that I just need to get to my special too, at 20 prowess, then land an intercept to remove the protection and to gain that theory, then just throw the special and the fight should be over. And just like that, the scorpion goes down. He has one of the lowest health pools in the game, so it is a very fast fight. Next up we have an America Chavez on the Ebon Flow Intercept and Mighty Charge nodes. I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now the plan here is basically the exact same as it was against that Scorpion, although everything doesn't go exactly as I wanted it to go. I'm building up my prowess just fine and I'm waiting a special one from her, but I messed up my face block. So the idea is that whenever she throws a special one, I dash away from her, dash in to trigger my facing and then block the second hit instead of facing it. That allows me to deal with the special without having to trigger dexterity and without consuming my prowess for causing it to miss. And it works great and I should have done it here with the special 2 as well, but I didn't. So this special 2 went down without removing the protection. So that just made the fight a lot longer than it should have been, but other than that it doesn't really make the fight any scarier or any more difficult. It just means that I need to build up back to my special 2 again and try again. I land the intercept and go straight for a special 2 with only 10 prowess, and even then it was enough to finish her off. Now, that was slightly risky. If I didn't finish her off there, I probably would have eaten a special 2, but luckily that didn't happen. Next up, we have an Omega Sentinel on the Ebon Flow Intercept and Mighty Charge nodes, the shared fight in section 2. And I'm taking this fight with Tigra. Now, I did have to remove my recoil masteries for this one, because I don't really want to be ticking down from the divas with Tigra. You never know when a fight doesn't go as planned, and if this is gonna turn out to be a long fight, constantly ticking down from the poison is not something I want to deal with. Now, the plan here is to just not worry about the protection at all, bait heavy attacks, punish them with my heavy to build up ruptures, and then drop my special twos. Even with the protection, they still do a lot of damage, and just a couple of those is enough to finish her off. Now, I really should have practiced the spacing for her special one, so that I could always punish it with my heavy attack, and that is something I'm gonna need to do for the future. But even then, she went down without any real issues. Next up we have a King Crude on the Safeguard Miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Omega Sentinel, starting in the Healbox debuff mode. Now I did have to put on my full recoil masteries again for my last remaining fights, so that's always fun. This season has been very expensive with mastery changes, boosts and everything else on top, but I'd say it's still worth it. Now the plan here 
like always, is to get to my special 3, get a heal block debuff up during the regeneration so that it doesn't get shrugged off, drop my special 3 for the incinerates, and then just keep doing normal combos finishing on a light attack to keep the incinerates as well as the heal block debuff paused for the rest of the fight. And that is basically all you need to do against a King Groot with Omega Sentinel. The heal block debuff is there to deal with his own region, willpower region, as well as the conduit region. Since my special 3 does inflict incinerate debuffs, which do trigger the conduit, without that heal block debuff I wouldn't be doing any damage really. So it is very important to start with that pre-fight. If you don't have the pre-fight active when you enter the fight, you are gonna have to use a heavy attack at some point to switch modes. Which isn't really that easy to do against a debuff shrugging opponent who also goes unblockable. You just can't land a parry to land that heavy attack. Now with the debuffs up, again I just need to keep them paused and just wait it out. Now unfortunately the AI was a little bit too passive there and I dropped the heal block debuff. And now the conduit is returning back basically everything I'm doing. I am gonna have to sneak in a heal block again at some point. I went for the pause and I got an opening here to go for a double medium. And now I do something that I probably shouldn't have done. I punished that heavy attack and went for a full combo finishing on a light attack to pause the debuffs. And that pushed King Root way too close to his special 2. Had he gotten to his special 2 and used it, I would have been dead. So, definitely should not have done that. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using a small health potion here to heal Omega Sentinel up to full, the reason is that if she is not at full HP and she has or gets a bleed or a poison debuff on her, she triggers a regeneration buff. And since it is a buff, it does trigger Mystic Dispersion. So to avoid that against this Doom, I just went ahead and used a small potion to get her back up to full HP. Okay, now then we have a Doctor Doom on the Stunning Reflection miniboss node. And I'm taking this fight with Omega Sentinel, starting with the Heal Block debuff mode active. Now the the plan here is to use the heal block debuff to deal with conduit as well as willpower healing and then I'm gonna be using the auto block trick to trigger incinerates on doom safely to disable the stunning reflection and to gain power from polkadot power as well as to get that tiny bit more damage on the incinerate debuff itself. Now, in case you haven't seen me use Omega Sentinel against a Stunning Reflection fight before, the autoblock trick is something you can do against anyone who isn't a mutant champion or incinerate immune. So, when Omega Sentinel is at 10 armor buffs, she has an autoblock safety net mechanic that also triggers an incinerate debuff on the opponent. The autoblock triggers the incinerate debuff before the parry stun, so it disables the stunning reflection and then stuns the opponent, getting you a free opening. That is an easy way to make the stunning reflection fight a lot easier to deal with in general. But just remember that against mutants, all of your incinerate debuffs will be plasma debuffs instead, so it doesn't disable the stunning reflection. Meaning that if you try it against a mutant, that parry stun on the autoblock will get transferred back to you and you are gonna get comboed. Now Omega Sentinel would work for this fight even without using that trick, but it just makes the fight a lot faster and a lot more fun. Now, I was debating on using a special here to finish it off, but I just let the incinerates do the work for me. A very easy fight for Omega Sentinel, and she is just so underrated in general. Next up we have my final fight of the war, everyone's favorite, Rintra. 
This is the Brute Force miniboss node, and I'm taking this fight with Kitty Pride. Now, the plan is, as usual, to just punish his special ones with my heavy attack to knock him down, which then removes his mystical charges. Doing that, Rintra doesn't really do anything as a defender, other than waste time. And that's basically all there is to this fight, once again. Um, Rintra is just a very long fight, with basically any attacker, but at least next season with Ghost being whitelisted, I guess you could take advantage of those rupture debuffs and just pick him down with a couple special views. But until then, yeah, prepare for a few more Rintra fights for the rest of this season. Now I probably should be cutting out these Rintra fights and maybe some of those King Root fights as well by now. But since I'm doing these war videos to basically keep track of everything I'm doing and to just be able to reference those fights to anyone if they ever need to see the fights, I'm not gonna cut them out. I do sometimes speed them up like this to just get them over with faster, but I still want to have them included so that I can keep track of everything myself. But on the plus side, I do always include the timestamps for every single fight down in the description. So if you ever need to just skip some of the fights for whatever reason, if you don't want to watch them, if you've already seen them, you can just go down there and click on the timestamps to skip on the fights that you don't want to see. And that marks the end of my war. I'm well on pace to smashing my own record for the season, but more on that on the final war. We did end up winning the war 5-4, to four. it was a very close one, but we did manage to clutch it up. <laughs>